Nearly half of the TSX real estate sector reports results this week, with nearly a quarter of them reporting after the bell today. Dream Industrial REIT, Boardwalk REIT, Minto and Killam Apartment REIT are just some of the names that will report once markets close. For investors, REITs haven't necessarily been a good place to be. Over the past year, as rates have continued to rise to multi-year highs. And if you look at the past six months, the sector is one of the worst performing on the TSX with a loss of nearly 10 percent. So for more on the sector, we're joined by Matt Kornack, real estate equity research analyst at National Bank. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for that pleasant intro. Yeah, I know, <laughs> setting things up really well. Well, I mean, maybe that spells opportunity Fair from enough. here. Yeah. Um, Dream Industrial REIT is one of the ones reporting today. It's also one of your uh, top picks. Yeah. What is it that you like about uh, Dream right now? Yeah, so the thing is, we like the valuation at this point. You mentioned REITs have been under some pressure. It trades at an implied cap rate that is above its financing costs, which a lot of the REITs don't at this point are pretty tight to that number. And we think there's a large embedded mark to market opportunity. Essentially, there was a, a huge increase in rent during the pandemic that the REIT is still catching up to. Uh, and that will drive really strong operating performance over the next uh, several years. So, so we like the name. We like it from a valuation standpoint and think it's one of the best growth stories in the space. Is there anything in particular that you'd be watching out for tonight? Yeah, I think leasing spreads are probably the best indicator for this one, and, and our expectation is that they will be high. Uh, there is some concern with industrial that uh, market rents are maybe not growing at the same pace as they were before. Now, that's nearly impossible for them to do because during the pandemic, for instance, Montreal saw over 50 plus percent rent increases. Mm. Uh, we weren't expecting that to continue, but if they can continue to generate these lofty uh, marked market spreads, I think that's positive for the story. In the residential multifamily space, um, that's where Boardwalk REIT would fall, which is going to report tonight as well. But when you're looking at that sort of multifamily REIT space, what's your outlook for for that category? So it's interesting. I talked about valuation for Dream. I think I'm more comfortable with the cap rate relative to the growth for Dream Industrial. That said, I think the fundamentals, if you look at Canadian apartments, are accelerating. So mm. we have a supply demand issue in this country with a lot of people coming in and we're not building enough housing. So that is going to drive higher rents and we're seeing it. Uh, someone like Boardwalk does benefit from the fact that they're in Alberta, which isn't a rent controlled market. So they can get at that rent increase quicker. Uh, but needless to say, I think as we look to Capreet and others that own in Toronto and Vancouver, uh, Minto as well, uh, we'll, we'll see pretty sizable rent growth from that. So least concerned about apartment fundamentals, but the valuations are a bit tight. Yeah, Minto is the one that you uh, really like in this space, yeah. right? Um, what is it that, uh, you know, sets Minto apart? So Minto has underperformed, I would say, relative to the quality of what it owns. Mm. As I mentioned, it's it's in the geographies you want to be in. Uh, there were some hiccups with regards to some acquisitions that they funded with variable rate debt that they ultimately have replaced with cheaper long term debt, but it took some time. So their earnings took a hit. We think that that was largely a timing based issue and uh, we're expecting really good, strong uh, top line growth. And the cap rate spread to its peers is just too wide for the quality of the assets that it owns. What about the office REIT space? <laughs> What's happening there? Office is a little bit more challenging. I mean, the issue is right now we're trying to fight higher interest rates. So in order to do that and, and make returns work, you need growth. And office is in a cyclical, some would say secular, we'll see, uh, decline. So, th so it's tough to get you, the, the return you need. Cap rates have widened for the fact that your NOI may actually be declining in office in a period of time when interest rates are going up, and that is not a good situation to be in. That said, some of these valuations are approaching levels that are more like the land on which the assets are located. So mm. we're getting more constructive or at least looking a little harder at these portfolios. Um, but we're not expecting great operating performance in the immediate term from them. Stable would be good. So, I mean, that sounds like seeing opportunity just because they're just as low as they are versus the, the growth opportunity. It's one of the places where you're actually getting a wider cap rate spread to financing costs today than you have gotten historically because mm -hmm. there's more of a risk premium embedded. Um, I think, again, the opportunity there 
is for a bit of a rebound. Maybe things aren't as bad as we expected. And, and again, something like an Allied Properties, which is our outperform in the office space, mm -hmm. owns some of the best downtown urban land in the country. Um, the problem is the public markets have never been particularly great at pricing land, and there's leverage on these entities. So uh, we, we do need operations to stabilize, and there's still supply coming online in the office market in Canada. You expect the strongest performance within the, the seniors living in the healthcare sector? Yeah, so we are are bullish on seniors. Uh, we've had a bit of a turnover in, internally, so we don't cover as many of the names as we used to. Mm. But um, what we saw there was just a rebound trade out of the pandemic. Uh, the demographics are quite positive for that space if you look out with baby boomers aging. Um, and just the, the fundamentals have strengthened and, and there's been more investor demand in those asset classes and valuations are reasonable. And you're also optimistic about the retail space yep. at RioCan. Yeah. Uh, reported recently. So we're seeing some of the strongest retail leasing spreads that we've seen in a long time. I mean, Rio can put up on, on new leasing 21% rent, rent spreads. That's an impressive figure for a retail entity. They are, at the end of the day, benefiting from population growth with no new supply of retail space. And, and again, Rio can and, and a number of the names that we cover in the retail space are necessity-based uh, types of retail. Uh, so they hold up well in recessions. And outside of the pandemic, which was an exceptional circumstance, they've held occupancy fairly high, and, and these rent spreads are good. So we'll see. It is a recession, not, not entirely a recession-resistant asset class, spending is going to take a hit. Uh, we believe that they'll outperform because it's necessity-based product, but still that's something to keep in mind when you look at retail at this point. Just to come back to where we started with the, the sector as a whole on mm -hmm. the TSX, uh, you know, under pressure, do you see that changing, the direction changing in the near term or is it more of a longer term story right now? So I feel better this week than I did two weeks ago about okay. real estate. Yeah. It is, rates are a big determining factor of where this sector is ultimately going to go. Mm. And we're trying to, uh, to accomplish this soft landing with lower rates and lower inflation. The, the issue I have is just, we wanna pick defensively because we think we're going into a recession and we're hoping that rates do come down as a result. But real estate doesn't necessarily perform great if you're in a depression. So we need this soft landing with lower rates. And, and I think that is a positive catalyst. But it's a hard uh, needle to thread at the end of the day for the policymakers. So we'll yeah. see. So just the fact that the conversation has sort of turned to this idea that these central banks, whether it's in Canada and the U.S., they're, they're, they might be done at yeah. this point. That's changed your perspective? That is definitely yeah. a positive. Yeah. Um, I think... At the end of the day, it, we needed to see some level of certainty around rates. I think the other thing that would be constructive for real estate is right now people are hiding in short duration kind of lower risk cash equivalents at high interest rates. And this is a yield vehicle historically in Canada. Right. So uh, to the extent that we start to see rates come down at the short end of the curve, it could flush some capital into our sector. And we need it because there's not much capital in the sector at this point. So. Matt